to my channel CSIG Tutorials by Kanyakumari. This video I am doing on the occasion of uh, just the completion of my 50 videos. 50 plus uh, videos uh, are uploaded in uh, my YouTube and also one month I have started exactly on February 23rd now March 23rd so for successfully completion of my one month videos up there uploading so I am just I planned just to do the coding part two for this I am doing this one hope uh, you understand plus videos if you have any doubts uh, in that then uh, simply uh, you can uh, comment me in my comment box hope you understand and one more thing if you want a particular topic on particular uh, uh, data structures in particularly if you want any particular topic you just uh, send me a message then uh, I will try to upload that video with a detailed explanation let us start with coding part 2 video in part 1 previous video means in coding part 1 so first what I discussed is so how to build a logic how to build a logic that means first we have to write a solution mathematically then try to write the logic so based on for how, how many input variables are required how many output variables are required and uh, loops how to use uh, that means uh, this loops here it is nothing but simply how to write the logic and uh, we discussed one example uh, given number we have discussed okay so now this is just basics for any programming and now we want to discuss so after getting the solution mathematically and this uh, uh, what are the input variables what are the output variables and about the logic then how to build a program for building a program another point here it is for example you are doing a large program you are doing a large program let us suppose you are doing a project let us suppose uh, you are doing one large pro one project means it is large only so one project you are doing so that project has to done by some team some team will be assigned to complete that project okay so for that team so not different teams may present so for the te team may consisting of 10 or 20 team members so uh, that is that means that project is divided into number of modules like module 1 module 2 module 3 module 4 this module is assigned to some team 1 this module is assigned to team 2 this module will be assigned to team 3 this module will be assigned to team 4 like that individually all these teams will try to complete these modules later on they will combine all these modules to get the final solution okay so that means so if the problem is very large that here we are doing that means for example uh, coming to some uh, banking application coming to some banking application so in banking uh, application or banking project uh, some it is divided into like this some teams so like uh, related to all the operations like uh, depositing so will done by one team so this is my uh, case study simple example i am considering in my point of view okay deposit so now this is so an, another team will be assigned for withdrawal operations so withdrawing the money and the updating database like that so withdrawing and about all pin related operations that will be assigned to another team like that so again here also 
it's, um, so many teams will work to complete this banking project. Not only all this, for security, providing security, large team is required. Like that, so what I want to say here it is, if the problem is very large, that we will divide into sub-problems. So that the sub-problems concept in our programming, programming language here it is called as functions. If you know functions, so now deposit related operations is done by one team that we will write in one function. Withdrawal related we will write in one function. Pin related operation we will write in one function. So in main function that means to complete all this. So now, so all these are combined. So deposit is com written here like withdraw is written here. Then pin is written here. So deposit, okay. So like that. So finally you are getting the solution. Again, you want to perform. Uh, uh, you want to perform some deposit operation. Again, you can call. So without writing again, just you can call the functions. So that means a uh, functions are very important. If if your problem is very large and reusability, reusability. So you have written some code. You have written some code. The same code wants to use somewhere. I got the same type of code. Then without writing the code again, I will write, I will give some name to this code like function. Whenever it is required, simply I will call that function. So that is the main usage of this functions concept. So when we will use functions. So in previous video, just we discussed how to build a logic, how to write a simple program. So now what we want to discuss is if the problem is very large, then if the problem is very large, then how to solve a problem. So that problem we will solve by splitting into number of functions like function 1, function 2, function 3, function 4. Like that we will divide the problem into sub problems. For example, consider uh, uh, one data structure like a stack data structure. In the data structure we will perform the operations like a push operation, pop operation, peak operation. Like that we are going to perform these uh, operations. This is one function, this is one function, this is one function. Why? Because push we want to perform 100 times. Pop I want to perform 50 times. Peak I want to perform some 25 times. Shall we write 100 times logic for push? Shall we write 50 times logic for pop? Shall we write 25 times for uh, uh, peak operation? No. We will write once. We will write only once. Call many times. We will write once and we will call many times. So that is called as code reusability. That is called as code reusability. What will happen if you have written or if you call many times? So pro code length is reduced in a so less code. Suppose push logic consisting of five statements. Simply I am writing. Five statements to push function consisting of. Okay. So 100 times I need to push. That means how many statements you will get? 100 into 5. 500 times. 500 statements you will get here. If you are not using functions. If you are not using functions. 500 times. That too. The same statements you are writing how many times? 100 times. Suppose for all, for all these five statements, if I have given some name like push function name, then what shall I do? Just push I will call 100 times. How many times do you want to run this push operation? 100 times. So that means how many statements you will get? Only 100 statements you will get. So here how many statements you are getting? 500 statements. Here how many statements you are getting? 100 statements. So 
program length is reduced length of the program is reduced that's why this functions plays an important role if your problem is very large so in real world in real world program doesn't consisting of like 10 statements or 20 statements or not like 100 statements okay um, one lakhs of lines of code you want to write and sometimes that reusability is required so writing efficient program is also important not only remember remember students this is very important this is very important so to solve a problem you may have number of solutions for solving a problem you may have many number of solutions but you have to write the best solution you have to write the best solution see the same problem you solved by writing 500 statements the same problem you have written uh, for 100 statements so 500 statements is also a solution 100 statements is also a solution but which one is the best solution which is having less code is the best solution the people will accept this code only they won't accept this code though you are getting correct result so the best solution is also important that's why this code reusability less code program length is less all these things are also important to build the code or to build a project so all this is possible uh, by writing some functions this is one uh, concept if the problem is very large that problem is divided into sub problems the problem is divided into sub problems so that sub problem here it is called as a function see i'm not telling like so everywhere it is divided into functions in real time projects also functions are built not in all cases in our programming terminology here so the sub your problem is divided into like these sub problem and that sub problem is assigned to particular team so later on all that will be combined combined is nothing but here integrated integrated to get the final solution in the same manner here also so separately all these are done so to complete to get a single solution so you have to combine you have to integrate all this and that you have to write in efficient manner that efficient solution is also important so that's why i thought of doing the video on the concept of functions so main concept here i, I will tell you so what is the purpose of functions these function syntaxes will vary from one programming language to another programming language c language c++ so function and here we will call them as a method actually so in c++ or python so in these we will call these functions as uh, methods and here in c++ also um, some uh, people will say that as a method here also you can say that as a method but generally we will call it here in c as a function so i'm concentrating on main concepts of functions what is the purpose of function i think you understand students so what is the main concept of functions later on so now what is the syntax of writing function in c language in c language what is the syntax and how to execute and we will write one example program so all this we are going to discuss in this video so now let us start with the functions so here also functions means a every student has is feeling some difficult so how to write a function how to call the parameters how to return a value so uh, they are they are feeling some difficulty so don't feel difficulty like main is a function you are writing main function na? so in the same manner write another function that's it don't see this as a separate topic function means it is very large you will get the program length 
more program length uh, you will get. So don't think like that. You are writing main function. Main is a function. Main is one function. So how we are writing main function? So in the same manner, write another function whenever required. Write another function whenever required. That's it. Don't take this as a separate topic. So if you are writing this main function, why don't you write remaining functions? Think of it once. If you are writing main, it is a function only. So if you are writing that, why don't we write another function similar to main? You can write. Just try it. Okay. If you understand the concepts, what I am explaining. So please observe carefully. So then practice it. Definitely it will feel easy to write a program using functions. Okay. So now generally here functions the basic terminology what we will get here are. What is the terminology here we will get in functions concept. First first concept here it is parameter passing. Parameter passing. Don't take this as a separate concept in functions. Parameter is nothing but simply a variable. Parameter is nothing but simply a variable. Passing is nothing but transferring. Passing is nothing but transferring. You are transferring some data from main func function to this function. So you are transferring some data from main, some function 1 to function 2. So you may pass that, fun that data from function 2 to function 3. Okay. So that transferring is nothing but passing. Parameter is nothing but variables. That means a data. Variables, a data we will pass. What we will pass? So if function 1 consisting of some a value like 10. That a value we will pass. That 10 we will pass here. Again that 20 we will pass here. For example it consisting of 20. Like that what is this a? A is simply a variable but in functions. So here you are passing na. That's why here it is called as a parameter. Parameter is nothing but a variable which is used as a passing data to another function. That's why here another name parameter. Passing is nothing but transferring of data. You are giving money to your friend. Suppose myself. Okay. And my friend is there. My friend is there. Here I want to transfer money. I have 1000 rupees. That 1000 rupees I am transferring. That 1000 rupees is present in A for example. That 1000 rupees I am transferring to my friend. So this A is called as parameter. What is that parameter consisting of the value? 1000 rupees. That 1000 rupees is passed to here. This is parameter passing. Parameter passing is nothing but data transfer. Parameter passing is nothing but data transfer. See, I am not directly going to uh, what is this is the syntax. These are the parameters, uh, the actual parameters, formal parameters. So that is simply directly explaining the concept. But now what I want to say is why should we use parameters? Why should we use functions? Why should we return? That I want to say, if you understand that concept, definitely you will get an idea of functions. Please don't skip the video. See the complete video. Definitely you will get a confident on functions concept. It is very, very useful, my dear students. Please watch completely. So this functions concept. So now, so now why we are passing parameters? Passing parameters is nothing but data transfer. Transferring the data. So for that purpose we will pass the parameters. So now myself here it is nothing but assume it as main function. This is considered as some function. So this main function consisting of a value like 10. This 10 I want to pass to fun. So pass this 1000 rupees or 10 rupees. So that 10 here it will be passed into some b variable. That's it. This is called as parameter passing, simple. This is called as a parameter 
and that parameter you are passing here that is called as parameter passing that is called as parameter passing simple you can write like this so that is the concept of parameter passing now here two types of parameters generally in the terminology two types of parameters what are those two types of parameters here 10 we are passing na? so here myself consisting of 1000 rupees my friend is receiving here i am sending sending the data 1000 rupees here what we will call it as a receiving the data 1000 rupees this is sending 1000 rupees this is receiving 1000 rupees see 1000 rupees 1000 rupees data is same but uh, what here we are calling this is sending and this is receiving that means this is actual this is actual and this is formal parameter here it is 1000 so coming to here terminology so two types of parameters one is actual parameter one is actual parameter second one is formal parameter whatever i am sending that is actual i am sending the data to my friend that is my actual money okay my friend receives the money my friend receives the money that is formal parameter my friend receives the money the same way 1000 rupees only see here parameter we will call but here it is a sender and here it is receiver this a sender is calling function this receiver is called function sender sending the data is actual parameter receiver receives data that is a formal parameter this a sender is called as a calling function this a receiver is called as a called function this is sending that means sender this calling function is nothing but the sender this called function is called as a receiver sender and receiver hope you understand students i am telling again i am my myself here it is so this is a sender and receiver my friend is the receiver so this is a receiver sending thousand rupees receiving thousand rupees okay so now this sender is nothing but calling function this sender is nothing but called function this will be stored in a variable this will be stored in b variable this a here it is called as actual money here my my money here it is so that is actual money so that means here it is called as what actual parameter this is called actual parameter then what is here receiver receives the thousand rupees received that received money is called as formal parameter that received money is called as received data is called as a formal parameter hope you understand students calling function called function actual parameter and formal parameter okay see we got four definitions in functions concept every in every programming language this terminology is the same calling param calling function called function actual parameters and formal parameter in any programming language c c plus plus java python whatever okay so now after identifying so or you can take this as main function this you can take as another function like a few years this is function so this is and now here this is called as calling function this is called as called function simple okay why should i transfer data this function requires the data this called function requires the data that's why here i am transferring 
that's why i'm transferring okay so that is called as what here in our terminology parameter passing parameter passing simple okay so when we will pass parameters is the question every student will get that question when we will pass some data as a parameter so now you you have some data this is myself myself is nothing but here you are main function okay my friend is nothing but some function my friend needs money my friend needs money that means this function needs some data from money from myself that means from main function then what what shall i do my friend asks na so compulsory what shall i do now i have to transfer the money i will transfer the money definitely so in that case a parameter passing concept requires if function doesn't take any parameters there is no use of writing functions concept no use of using functions concept if this is the case simply generally transfer the money it requires some data then no need to write uh, without uh, transferring the money no need to write the functions so functions actually different types that we will discuss okay so now the concept is when we will pass parameters whenever my friend requires money friend is nothing but what i said students function so whenever my friend requires money a function needs data then main function has to transfer the data see not only main function here one function is there f u n one function some statements and another function is there function 2 so this this friend is having some money 2000 rupees another friend of mine is uh, requires some 2000 rupees then again what will happen so my friend transfers this money to another friend that means a function to function one function to another function parameter concept so in that situation we will use this parameter whatever data you are having in one function that data you want to transfer to another function then parameter passing concept is required okay so now another important thing here it is return when we should return a value or data that may be character or a string or an array when shall we return data consider the same example consider the same example this is myself and this is my friend assume this is what your main function this is what your another sub function function okay so my friend requires data na that's why i am transferring the data what is this concept called as a student that concept is called as parameter passing i transferred a maybe 100 rupees or 1000 rupees or 1 10 1 lakh 10 lakh now my friend receives the money this is called what is this a called as now this a called as actual this a is called as actual parameter this b is called as formal parameter received money this is received money this is sender money okay now so my friend requires money na just i transfer after usage after usage at that time my friend requires money after usage he has done something with that money okay after that some amount will be returned good friend na he is returning he is returning money that means this function returns returns some data to another function that means my friend returns 
So this is called as, did you remember previously? This is a calling function. This is what? Yes, it is called function. Now, calling function to called function data transfer is called as your parameter passing. Calling function to called function, the concept is called as parameter passing. Called function to calling function, the data transfer is called as return. That's it. If you understand this concept, return is also clear. Okay. I'm repeating. The data transfer from calling function to called function is done by parameter passing technique. Okay. So, now the data transfer from called function to calling function is called is done by written statement. Okay. So, and here you may have, see, I'm, I'm taking an example. It is easy to understand. So, don't uh, take it as a personal. Just I'm telling an example for easy understanding purpose. I'm not hurting anyone. Just some friends are there. So, some friends will take parameters, will take the money they don't want to return. Maybe they don't have money, they don't want to return. That means they may return or may not return. May return, may not return. So, similarly, this, I have money, that's why I am passing parameter. If I don't have money, you may get doubt, madam. You have money, that's why you are transferring to your friend. But I don't have money, then how can I transfer? Yes, parameter passing also. So, parameter passing may present. Parameter passing may not present. See the cases here. So, you may pass parameters or you may not pass parameters. You have money, transfer it. Parameter passing. If you don't have money, no parameter passing. Okay. Now coming to this one. So my friend is returning money to me. He has money. He or she has money. That's why returning money. Suppose that's that my friend doesn't have money. Just used again still uh, he wants money or uh, he may, it is not possible to return money. May not possible. Okay, so that's why here, see, parameter passing may present, parameter passing may present, remember parameter passing may present means myself to my friend, transferring the parameters. Okay, so then... Parameter passing may present. Parameter passing may not present as I don't have money. Parameter passing may not present. See this functions in depth. Why should we use functions that I am trying to explain. Then it is easy to understand. Okay. So otherwise I can write simply this is a syntax of function. Like this, you can write the program. I can close. But I want to do that internal explanation, in detail explanation of functions. Okay. Parameter passing may not present. That means I don't have money. So that means, so there is no transfer. My cell to my friend, no data transfer. Here, data transfer is there. Here, there is no data transfer. Next, return may present. Return may present and here, return may present. See, this is calling to called. Okay, so now here, return may present means my friend return money to myself that means called function to calling function called function to 
myself is nothing but water falling function okay may not present money return may not present as my friend doesn't have money return may not present so parameter present may return a value parameter is present may not return a value okay parameter present may return parameter present may not return so now for example parameters are not present that means i don't have money okay there are no para here the parameters and returns parameters no returns here no parameters and returns that means my friend is now my friend is giving money to me returned so my friend is giving money to me okay parameter may not present so return parameter may not present and may not return so generally these are the possibilities these are that means friends are of different types friends are of different types that's why i told you this is for just understanding purpose so i am not uh, telling like uh, practically in real world just for understanding purpose only i am telling so now so will take money will return will take money will not return and they won't take money but they will give some money then so they won't take money they won't return so here i am sending he is also sending the data so he is sending he is not returning he is not sending but he can give the money he is not sending and he won't return so like that different types of functions functions are also of different types so now how many functions here we have seen four types of functions we have seen what are those four types so four types are functions functions which takes parameters which takes parameters and returns 1000 rupees sending and 1000 rupees returning yes yes okay next second one now function which takes parameters function which takes parameters but not but it is not having money so it will not return so 1000 rupees i am sending which is possible return is not possible due to some problems my friend may not return money i don't have any problem okay next functions doesn't take parameters doesn't take parameters but gives money that here we will call it as return why i am calling return means called to calling here and this is calling to call okay for that differentiation purpose Thousand rupees. Here there is no transfer from calling to called, but called to calling it is there. Next functions doesn't take parameters. doesn't take parameters and also not returns 
and not return. That means they won't take money, they won't give money. That is the cap. So, thousand rupees per thousand rupees. My friend won't take money and also won't return money. Okay. See, four types. My friend takes money and returns. Takes money but not returns. Doesn't take money but he will give. Whenever I asks, whenever I asks, he will give. Okay. So now, this is won't take money, won't return. So these are the functions. The main we will use based on the requirement we will use actually, there is no use of this one. Functions, it doesn't take parameters and doesn't return anything. Generally, we won't use. This also we won't use. Maximum, in maximum situations, functions doesn't take any parameters but returns. We won't use. Mostly, we will use these two. Mostly, we will use these two. That means, parameter passing is there and returns. Parameter passing is there but not returns. These are the two functions types generally we will use these are the different types of functions actually for uh, friends are of different types generally let us say i am telling with an example for just understanding purpose okay i am not hurting anyone please don't take it as a serious okay so right j just uh, for understanding purpose only now some friends are there will take money and also returns some friends will take money, they won't return due to some problems. Next, third category, they will return. Fourth category, they won't return. They won't take and they won't return. Fourth category, they won't take but whenever I ask, they will give. Okay, so like that, different types of functions. Only first two type functions, generally we will use. Why? Because communication is there. So here, there is no communication. If you observe... If you observe, so communication is less. Here also you can say communication is less. But we are taking some parameters. Now calling to called is there. Calling to called is there. But reverse is not there. Okay. So generally we will use this. And mostly we will use this. Calling function to called function is there. Then called function to calling function is also there. So these two generally we will use. Okay. Now coming to how to write a function. How to write a function. How to write a function. That means defining a function. Syntax. Defining a function. Defining a function. So now, syntax. Syntax means how to write. Okay, syntax. So now, what type of data that function is returning? That means return data type. Then, what type of function? That means what is the friend's name? Function name. What data my friend is receiving? That data here it is called as what? A friend na? F -I -F -I. You can take like that. So that is called formal parameters. And then my friend wants to do something. That something here. That logic. This is, is called as function definition. That is called as function definition. So, return data type, function, formal parameters, logic type, and then function definition. Now, this function is returning. So, if it is returning compulsory, you have compulsory, you have to use the keyword, return keyword, return of some x, return of some y, like that we have to write. Okay. So, if x of data type integer, here we will write integer. If they, this x is of data type of float, then here we will write the written data type as float. If this x is of data type character, 
here that written data type we will write as character and function name this is function name so you are writing this function for what purpose for addition purpose or subtraction purpose or a deposit purpose or a withdrawal purpose or pin change whatever so what for what operation you are writing this function write that function name addition multiplication subtraction reverse of a number palindrome something so for example factorial of a given number factorial okay so formal parameters are nothing but any number you can pass any number of parameters you can pass but here important thing here it is data types you should mention data types like integer a comma integer by how we will declare the variables in the same manner see what i said parameter is nothing but what i said parameter is nothing but a variable parameter is nothing but a variable simple okay so variable means compulsory you have to declare the data type okay take an example how to write a function so now for example in previous video we discussed uh, encoding video itself so we discussed the factorial of a given number how to find out factorial of a given number so 5 factorial is nothing but 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 so 5 factorial so factorial of a given number like that we have written for some i equal to 1 then i less than or equal to assume this as number n so i plus plus this is the logic actually okay so factorial equal to factorial into i so this is the logic for factorial of a given number now functions that is our concept using functions okay simple so just we will write this in one block like this we will write in one block and we will give some name like factorial simple close okay so that means see this is the logic so just you can write in main function close it but factorial of different numbers i want to calculate repeatedly now I want to find out the factorial of 10, I want to find out the factorial of 20, I want to find out the factorial of 30, I want to find the factorial of 40. Then without writing this logic the four times, I will write only once. I will write only once. But I will call four times. Reusability. That's it. Close. Okay. That is our functions concept. Now, see. How to write it up so in main function what shall we do is I'm writing here only main logic so in main function so one number is there that n is there that n we will read here we will read that n that n we will pass as a param <coughs> sorry so that n we will pass as parameter close this okay now we have to write this function factorial of this is called as actual parameter this is called as actual parameter and this is formal parameter with the data type we have to write now that n simple so whatever this logic see observe whatever this logic remember code coding part one is important how to build the logic after building the logic, you have to use this functions concept. Without coding part 1, if you have not seen, see that. Okay. So, if you are ready with the coding, if you are ready with the logic, then how to write that logic using functions is your tutorial here. Okay. So, now, factorial of n. Write that logic simply. So, some declare some variable like i for loop logic something close this that's it so this is called as actual parameter this is called as formal parameter simple if you want to return remember if you want to return then compulsory 
return whatever you want to return just write resultant some variable returning variable here this resultant of data type integer then give here integer and remember if a function is returning some value then in calling function on left hand side you have to take some variable i'm repeating that point if this function is returning a value if a function is returning a value then on left hand side of the function call left left hand side you should take why because this is returning the that you have to store somewhere my friend is returning money okay so that i have to store okay so that x and that x here you can print print x like that you can do the program let us uh, show me let us show uh, the execution of this program also how to write a program using functions factorial of a given number in part 1 just we have executed so now here we will write using functions how to execute the code now i am opening so now factorial of a given number factorial of a given number using functions okay hash include stdio dot h then you can start your one main function in main in main so which number factorial you want to calculate so take that number declaration so now what is this statement called as see here i am writing each line meaning also try to understand this is variable declaration integer number now print f enter a number scan f percentage d then address of number that factorial of a given number we want to calculate in a function so factor that function name i'm writing factorial of this number i want to calculate okay that's it main function close okay i'm transferring the money i'm transferring the money whatever i have in main function i have money that means this number value that i'm passing to factorial function now coming to that function return it returns nothing for example factorial of one parameter number now for loop purpose i variable to store resultant which is initialized to 1 now start your logic see try to write the program if you are ready with the logic okay i equal to 1 i less than or equal to number then i plus plus result equal to result into this i and finally we have to print the result print f the factorial of a number equal to percentage d then result okay save your program then compile your program yeah see the error what i said whenever you are getting error read the error understand the error rectify the error okay don't panic if you are getting error read the error so again compile implicit declaration of factorial now see here that function declaration here we will call function declaration is nothing how we are declaring variable 
before going to use this number. So we will declare the variable in the same manner before going to call the function we have to declare the function. That's it. Execute. Compile. See no errors, no warnings. Try to execute. Run the code. Number 5. See, 5 factorial is 120. The factorial of a number is 120. Now, see, like that, I can read any number of times a number and I can call any number of times. Suppose uh, I want to calculate a factorial of 6 here. Later on, some factorial of 9 I want to do or some less number I am taking for calculation is easy now. So, like that, for example, I want to calculate. Now, see, compile the code, then execute, run the code. For, for the first time, it will ask. I have read, I am reading now. So, 5 factorial, 6 factorial, 4 factorial. That's it, simple. Now, if you want to return a value, see, with, you are not for factorial of. Uh, 6 you are not writing this logic again for factorial of 4 you are not at all writing the logic just we are reusing the code that is the main advantage don't forget reusability is the main advantage of functions concept okay so now i want to return this value then int so whenever it is returning what i said compulsory left hand side you have to take a variable if you are using the variable that you have to declare. So, declare. And this resultant here we have to print. Return na, that we will print there. Save. Compile. See some errors are getting. Void value not ignored as it ought to be. So, here without a return statement, how can we return? So, result return. Compile. Void value not ignored. Ah, yeah, see here. We have given return data type integer now. Then here also you have to modify integer. So what I said, understand the meaning and rectify that. Simple. Execute. Compile. See? No errors, no warnings. Now execute. Run the code. Factorial of 6. 720. Answer will be same. But way of writing. So here main function to factorial function I am passing parameter and finally my friend is returning something may not be the same or may, may be same or may not be same so return generally here we will use a return statement like this okay returns remember on left hand side you should take a variable if a function returns okay that's all students functions Hope you understand this functions concept. If you have any doubt or if you need any program related to functions, so you can ask me. I will try to do that video. So just tell me whether is it useful to you or not. Just send me a message whether this, uh, this video is helpful to you or not. Okay. Thank you students. Thank you for watching my video. Have a great day. Bye.